Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. And I'm Patrick. And today we're going to talk a little bit, a bit about EV tipping points and where we are. But with that, roll the title. You're watching the Tesla Life Express. Thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about an article that was put out by Tesla Roddy. And uh, this article was talking about EV tipping points, where we are in the world. Apparently this past year, 2023, we had 31 countries reach the EV tipping point. And this article mm -hmm. starts the EV tipping point in any given country at a 5% market penetration for BEVs. So um, the year before that, uh, we were at 19 countries. So we've had an increase, almost a close to a doubling, uh, not quite a doubling, but um, there is progress. Uh, in last year's numbers, we saw the United States uh, come up with a 8.5% market penetration for BEVs, and uh, in Canada here, a 92 So uh, again, Canada is a much smaller country, 10 times as small, smaller than the U.S. Uh, so when it comes to numbers, of course, the U.S. is leading this chart in many ways, but um, when it comes to the percentages as to the population getting on board, uh, that's what we're talking about today. I was kind of surprised in this article that they see the tipping point starting at 5%. I thought mm -hmm. that number was kind of low just looking at it. I don't know if I would determine that 5% is a tipping point or not. Obviously, they've done some, they've done some uh, work on this, but um, what did you guys think? Is 5% is reasonable when it comes to a tipping point? Well, I mean, 5% is where we saw Norway start to run away. And at the very least, at 5%, it's not going away anytime soon without some really, really uh, nefarious invested action against uh, the products. So um, if you look at, like, crossing the chasm, it's usually higher than that. Like, uh, it's above, uh, it was just 13.5% before you uh, get out of the early adopter market. Right. So um, it, it's, it's a continuous curve, right? So you can look, depending on what zoom factor you have, the knee moves into different places. So uh, it is nice to see, though, that the snowball is gaining. And once you hit 5%, the, what they've seen historically from the other countries that have gone past it already, Norway and China, is that things really start to accelerate after that. You go from the linear portion of the sigmoid curve to the exponential portion of the sigmoid curve, and uh, that's when you really start seeing putting out some numbers. Now, I don't know if the I was looking at this data because in 2014, in June 2014, so almost 10 years ago, I made some predictions about U.S. EV adoption, and up until 2021, my numbers were really close, and then. Um, 2022 and 23 were higher than I expected. And, and I started looking at why. Well, we, we have talked about on the show how interest rates were a problem and for, for new vehicle sales in general. So that will push them down, which if EVs are still a little more expensive and that means that the people buying them are usually a little more wealthy and we want to get that to a point where everybody's buying them. But right now that's not quite the case, which means if there's this... Uh, pressure on interest rates, well, if you have more money, you either can afford the payment or you're just buying it without financing it. So the interest rates are relevant. So I think that sort of artificially boosted EV sales or EV sales have, have continued their uh, growth, whereas gas cars have been pushed down a bit. So it's it's interesting. It'll, it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, I, I hope that, that um, uh, who was this that uh, New energy, Bloomberg New Energy is correct, and then we start seeing things really start growing now that we've passed this uh, tipping point. That would be great. I, I really want to see it above 12 or 13 percent before I, I start thinking, oh yes, it's it's obviously here, it's unstoppable. But once you once you've gotten that percentage, there's enough market that you can start getting economies of scale. We're going to see the point in the not too distant future where even initial price off the lot EVs are going to be cheaper. 
because they're they're gaining economies of scale as gas cars are losing economy of scale and yeah we're not we're not seeing if if you know tesla's selling millions of cars there are other companies selling evs as well all of that is taking a market share away from gas cars and you have that reversing economies of scale all of a sudden all your fixed costs become uh worse and and you have fewer vehicles to amortize it over and it, it quickly becomes um a losing game to, to keep selling and making those vehicles which is one thing that's really cool to see ford splitting their businesses off into two different reporting segments we're going to see right now they're, they're losing money on evs but that is going to change over the next few years and so you'll start seeing that switch the other way exactly wow. we got a, we got a couple of um charts to show here um yeah. from the article and uh of course you can see the growth uh that's happening uh as the years after crossing the five percent threshold uh they're tracking of course china and germany um some uh leaders uh norway the nordic countries are in here as well but i guess the five percent is something that allows them to say that that based on the history of others that have crossed that five percent amount that uh, we can judge that uh, it will continue to grow. So that's why they're saying that the 5% is the tipping point uh, mm -hmm. and that it changes everything. Yeah, this graph, it took me a minute to figure out what they're doing here. So it starts when a country hits 5%. And so for the US, that was uh, 2021. So the first year there would be 2022. And then the second year in green is that's 2023 that they just got data for so okay so it's it so you can see that china and germany two years after hitting five percent had grown quite a bit more than the us so we are we are going slower with our adoption yeah and that, that of course reporting. that of course is when policy changes happen too right so yeah. it's mm -hmm. uh, those affect uh, the growth uh and when somebody is behind it uh we know that for example china uh, has been on the electric vehicle kick as a country for Absolutely. some time. And they are able to push with not uh, having to have too much debate upon it. It's it's something mm -hmm. that they've decided early and they're going to follow that plan. And they've continued to follow that over the past five, six, seven years. So it, it makes sense that, that they could accelerate in that way because they can stick to the plan. Whereas in the U.S. Uh, and Canada, there has been debates uh, that have moved it around and, of course, have changed goal lines. And when you do that, then manufacturers have to bait and switch, change things up uh, to, to match, match those conditions. And, of course, that slows down the progress. Yeah. yeah, I would really like to know what some of these other countries are. Like the long line there is probably Norway. Yeah, They're probably. at 90% uh, almost uh, after 10 years. So that's pretty incredible. And then uh, look at the four-year mark. Somebody is already up to 60% in just four years after being at 5%. More than half of their vehicles in switched in just four years. That's incredible. Well, I'll tell you what. This, this next chart may give us an indication as to where those are. So you can see Norway, again, top of the chart, almost 80%. Mm -hmm. Iceland ah. uh, in four years at 58.4%. Denmark and Sweden, along with Finland, the Nordic countries, are all neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then we get into the uh, the lower amounts: uh, Belgium, Portugal, still with 24, 25 percent. China, twenty three point eight percent. So you know, with a high volume, but mm -hmm. the, the market penetration isn't as much as the Nordic countries. Yeah, it's amazing how many vehicles that is. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's 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 more than all the ones above it combined. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Israel, France, Austria, Germany, again, a large number, not as large as China. And uh, then we get into the uh, the the lower end of the field. There's uh, there's Canada and the United States uh, in the uh, pack, and uh, at the bottom. Our last entry uh, is Greece, uh, just getting in at the 5.3% market penetration for VEVs. I was going to say, if we had, if we didn't have as much oil, we wouldn't be in this position. But then you look at Norway, and that is just a matter of political will for what you yes. do with your oil, mm -hmm. uh, because exactly. they're also an oil-bearing nation. 
and and they they have the political will to to not um, keep keep burning baby burning and uh, <laughs> yeah the most profitable dealers are not users <laughs> right, exactly. uh, one one anecdote that came out of Norway that I enjoyed was you'd heard a couple of people who would uh, go on vacation they would go on a car vacation to mainland Europe and they'd take the car with them and they would sell it there and they'd come back and then they'd use the proceeds to get their their EV. Mm. It'll get that way eventually with everyone else where you don't want to, you know, where your countrymen don't want to be the bag holder and you end up taking yes. these uh, foreign vacations to go <laughs> and get rid of your combustor. <laughs> yeah, bag but holder it, is a good good phrase. You don't want to be the bag holder. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if you can see the writing on the wall, um, it's time to make a plan. Uh, as mm -hmm. to what you are going to do with the resources that you own. And if those resources are resources that are going to diminish in value, then uh, you've got to make that plan earlier. You've got to know what to do with those resources. Uh, and I think Norway has really played, well, they're, they're certainly a leader in this. Mm -hmm. And they've decided long ago uh, that they were going to sell their resource on the open market. And they were going to use the money that they received for that resource to allow them to transist, transist to electric vehicles but in the, in the form of uh, personal tax exemptions or rebates they were able to give, give the people of the country to switch and make the switch less painful. So bravo, Norway. Um, I'm hoping that more of us will find, obviously we're not gonna be number one in this, but I think that um, I think the writing is on the wall, and at least this report is now showing that the 19 to now a 31 club of countries uh, have made the 5% margin and are continuing to grow. Uh, that we can expect that next year uh, we can hope that that number uh, gets maybe close to a doubling of 60 uh, would be uh, along track from the 19 to to uh, 31 and from 31 to 60 uh, is where we're hopefully heading, but uh, we will have to wait and see, but uh, this is, this is good news. And it's interesting to see where your country ranks uh, mm -hmm. amongst the world. Uh, and uh, I was happy to uh, go over this report. It, it looked uh, very interesting. I would like to say to the audience out there, uh, if, uh, do you think 5% uh, is a tipping point? Do you think it should be a little higher? A little lower. What do you What do you believe uh, is a tipping point when it comes to BEVs uh, and the marketplace that you're in? And then my question to the audience would be: Who do we think will be the second nation to go uh, combustion free? Uh, the, the first one did it by decree. Will the second one do it just by market share, or will they also make a law that you can't do uh, combustion? So, who is combustion free right now? I want to say um, it was either Ethiopia or uh, is it at some future date they've said they won't sell gas cars or is it like a couple, like a couple oh wow awesome or two <laughs> not that they sell many new cars there but like that, well that's that, the other thing right is 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 it is it of consequence everything's of consequence yes but is it is there a larger volume of vehicles being sold there or was it really someone that's really jumping over a stage of transportation and just going to the best stage that's available to them instead of doing a lot of combustion they can jump into bev and completely eliminate the uh, pollution uh, that uh, was coming from ICE vehicles if they skip it. It was more of that because it only outlaws new combustion cars, not used, and mm -hmm. most of them are used cars. So, yeah. I'd right. be, 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 be interested to know who's next after Norway to hit 80%. Like that, and then don't forget yeah. Norway move their date, their stop sale date uh, of new combustion cars up. Uh, so it was what, 2035, and now it's 2030? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it was so successful there. And, and it's, uh, you know, being able, to, again, Norway, with their ability to incentivize not only the purchase of the EV, but also the operation of the vehicle, uh, free parking, uh, ability to take the uh, ferries uh, free of charge, a uh, number of perks for people that have EVs. And that, that actually pushed the nation forward uh, in a significant way. Just recently here in Canada, Quebec uh, had a provincial rebate of seven, I'm sorry, 
$8,000 on a vehicle that could be coupled with the federal uh, rebate of $7,000 to give someone a $15,000 rebate. That program has been so successful in Quebec that they have started to, they have announced the start of its drawdown because then there are now 20% of the new vehicles being sold in Quebec are BEVs. So they, they are now at the point where they're saying, you know what, we've got we to slow this down. It's going to drain our coffers dry, one thing. But we can also see that the benefits of BEV are now selling the public as well. So we don't have to offer as much as a provincial uh, rebate uh, as previously because the word is now out that they're a superior choice in transportation. Yep, exactly. and, and to close the loop on that, it was definitely Ethiopia on uh, – Early February. Cool. In February. Very good. Very good. Well, with that, I think we will wrap today's Tesla Express, and uh, we will get together again and uh, talk good. about the changes in the Tesla life. Any shows from you, Casey? We'll see you on Wednesday on the live show. That's right. That's right. Patrick? Well, I'm just happy to see that a future free from fossil fuels <laughs> is actually happening. <laughs> he got it in he just he always he always gets it in that's good that's good all right guys thanks so much and uh thanks lee moon and uh we'll catch you next wednesday for the live show bye everybody good day. <laughs>